Jameson Parker and Gerald McRaney of television Simon & Simon are making a movie. And Meryl Streep reveals why her new motion picture, Plenty, should get plenty of notice. Hi, I'm Jim Finnerty. Welcome to Seeing Stars, America's movie star show. The brightest stars, the hottest films, and what people like you think about Hollywood's latest movies on Seeing Stars, the movie star show. You know them as television Simon and Simon, but Jameson Parker and Gerald McRaney are moonlighting in the movies. We'll go on location for their upcoming picture, Jackals, to see why Jameson and Gerald decided to strike out on their own. Anybody who feels that what we're doing is even remotely akin to Simon and Simon needs to have his head examined. Meryl Streep plays a woman haunted by the passion and memories of her wartime experiences in the new motion picture, Plenty. We'll meet Meryl and discover why her remarkable acting has won her plenty of accolades, including four Oscar nominations and two Academy Awards. And we'll discover why September is traditionally a great month for movies, as we look ahead to upcoming pictures starring Jane Fonda, Anne Bancroft, Glenn Close, and more. It's not easy making the transition from being a television star to being a movie star, but a few personalities have done it. Eddie Murphy, of course, started out in television and made it big on the big screen. Tom Selleck has had only moderate success in the movies, and earlier this summer, Michael J. Fox of TV's Family Ties hit it big with a film called Back to the Future. Well, now the stars of Simon and Simon are making a movie, but not as the Simon and Simon characters, and without the help of a big Hollywood studio. How far are you going to take this? Huh? Listening to Mozart? That's Mozart? Uh-huh. Guy's good. Uh-huh. This is the Gerald McCraney and Jameson Parker we all know. In character as Rick and A.J. Simon on television's long-running hit series, Simon and Simon. On the television show, they play brothers, each with his own quirky personality. But when the going gets tough, Rick and A.J. stick together. In real life, Gerald and Jameson stick together as well, and currently they're making a movie together. It's called Jackal, an action-adventure about life and death on the Mexican border. The movie marks a big change for Gerald, who plays the picture's despicable bad guy. And it also marks a new direction for Jameson, who both stars in the picture and is one of the film's producers. Is this risky for you, taking a different kind of a role? I think this probably was a danger. Uh, some, some critic in uh, Fresno apparently wrote in his column, uh, why would anyone want to go see Simon and Simon uh, in the movies when you can see them on Thursday night? Well, uh, I don't know what his information is. I don't know uh, where he got his copy of the script. This isn't Simon and Simon. Uh, the role that Mackie is playing is probably even more removed from Rick than my character is from AJ. Uh, it's, it's as far removed as it can possibly be. He plays, we've cast him true to life, it's typecasting, and he plays a sadistic psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald McRaney and Jameson Parker have been together for five years as Rick and AJ Simon. Jackals is their first collaboration outside the series. And although they frequently kid each other, they're as close as brothers. Jameson Parker says this character is the real you. Well, that's the way Jameson perceives most people. Yeah, he's, he's more than slightly paranoid. He's, he's always been, I think he was dropped on his head as an infant and has been slightly, about half a bubble off plum ever since. But it's only in his adult life that it's become truly paranoid. I don't know whether it was his success as an actor or his becoming a producer. Or I don't know exactly how to explain it, but the man's gone downright nuts. Over the edge. Yeah. It's sad. We asked him about self- I don't cry about it a lot, but it is sad. <laughs> we asked him about self-confidence. Why would you ask him about that? <laughs> he said he had none. Yeah, well, that's true. All kidding aside, I was surprised to learn that there's more than a little bit of truth in Gerald's remarks about his partner. Jameson may be a sex symbol to millions of TV viewers, but he doesn't see it that way. You don't think of yourself as good looking. No, I don't. You don't. Most of the rest mm. of the country does, however. Mm. I'm grateful. I'm glad they do. But it's uh, 
partly I think it's a factor of, I remember as a child, whenever I would say, you know, ask my mother, do I look nice or something, her stock reply was, handsome is as handsome does, mm -hmm. which was sort of a shorthand for no. Mm -hmm. um, or don't get too smug yeah. with yourself. And I remember once, uh, when we first started shooting Simon and Simon, um, there was some talk that, that what they would do in the, uh, uh, the opening credits was have a series of baby pictures, of, you know, real baby pictures of me and Mackie. So I called my mother and explained to her what was happening. And there was a long pause on the other end of the phone. She finally said, well, you know, dear, you weren't frightfully photogenic as a child. <laughs> now, this is my own mother, so. Another surprise waiting for me on the set of Jackals was the strong sense of family I felt there. We visited on a holiday weekend, and many crew members had wives and children present. That's how Gerald and Jameson like it. Both stars are family men. For Gerald especially, being in the outdoors with his family is a pleasure. I'd like to be able to, to get out with my kids more and just do hikes and, and uh, you know, overnighters in the woods. Have you always been an outdoor person? Yeah, yeah, since I was a kid. I like to hunt a bit more and fish more. If I could avoid work at all, that's really what I'd like to do. I'm the laziest guy you've ever met in your life. Are you really? Yeah. You work yeah, a I'm lot. I'm very good at doing nothing. Well, Ask you... my wife. I sleep better than just about anybody. But you work a lot for being a, a guy who's lazy. No, not really. When you, uh, when you get paid money to do something that is more fun than all of those things, and that's, that's what it comes down to with me, is that, yeah, I like to go in the outdoors. I like hunting. I like fishing. I like camping. I like skiing. I like traveling but I like acting better than any of it. So if you're getting paid to do something you like that much, that's not work. To bring Jackals to the screen, Jameson collaborated with a third actor, Jack Lucarelli. This movie is really his idea, and it's also his starring vehicle. Jackals has neither a big budget nor a big studio behind it. So why would two of America's top TV stars want to get involved? Pick up a TV guide from 10 years ago and see how many names you recognize and see how many of those people are working now. Uh, somebody once said that uh, television swallows stars the way a whale swallows plankton. And it would be nice to think that the American public is so devoted to Jameson Parker that uh, they want to see me for years. But in fact, you can count the number of actors who have had a successful long-term career on television on the toes of one hand. I mean, the only ones I can think of... There goes another head. actor right now. That's, there you go. See what I mean? <laughs> Incidentally, Jack Lucarelli, who's also producing and stars in Jackals, says the film will be out in theaters early next year. Well, next week, you can see one of Hollywood's most respected actresses starring in a film along with rock star Sting. Her name is Meryl Streep. The film is called Plenty, and when we come back, we'll take you behind the scenes. Welcome back to Seeing Stars. You know, it's hard to believe, but Meryl Streep appeared in her first movie just six years ago. But in that relatively short time, she's won four Oscar nominations and taken away two Academy Awards. Meryl Streep is one of the most respected actresses anywhere, and movies are quite literally made for her. Her latest motion picture, Plenty, offers more of what her fans have come to expect. An interesting role with plenty of twists and turns, and a movie with plenty of Meryl Streep. Playing a character as I am, who's uncompromising in her, the demands she makes on other people and on the world, I really have to come up to that challenge, and it um, tests my mettle. Plenty is set in England, and Meryl plays Susan, a woman haunted by memories of her World War II experiences. During the war, Susan fights with the French resistance, and that proves to be the high point of her life a time filled with incredible passion, idealism, and danger. But when the war ends, Susan can't seem to recapture the excitement of the past. When the stakes are so high, when everything uh, is a matter of life or death, and you don't know if you're going to see each other the next day or not, or if there is going to be a next day, I think that life um, has richness and things matter. Good evening. After the war, England enters an era of plenty, but Susan is unable to find peace within herself, and she goes through a series of stormy relationships, including one with an Englishman named Mick, who's played by rock star Sting. 
Well, I'm looking for a father. I, I'm, I want to have a child. Uh, look, it really is much easier than it sounds. I mean, marriage is not involved. Or even looking after it. Uh, you don't even have to see the pregnancy through. I mean, conception would be the end of the job. I loved her anger, the size of it, and her fearlessness about expressing it. And also I was attracted by the dream inside of her and the idealism. And um, to me, she seemed like someone who all through her life up to her middle age just doesn't ever stop being as altruistic as only teenagers are, as obnoxious about the purity of her opinions and why have I not looked what she demands father? of the world. I think we've seen lots of heroes in literature and, and um, in the drama, uh, men who ask a lot of their circumstances and, and of society and of the world and who are demanding and, and aggressively so. And I don't think that that's unusual. What's unusual is that it's a woman. Challenges are nothing new for Meryl, from her first Academy Award winning role in Kramer vs. Kramer, to her portrayal of a doomed activist in Silkwood, strong and unusual women have been her trademark. Meryl is a native of New Jersey, but by taking intensive lessons in both Polish and German, she transformed herself into a haunted survivor of the Holocaust for 1981's Sophie's Choice. The movie swept every major award that year and won Marilyn Oscar for Best Actress. You can see the movie today on home video. How many languages do you know? Well, my father was linguist, so I mean, I, he teach me German, French, Russian, Hungarian, the Slavic languages. So, what language I am butchering now? <laughs> English. How about your father was a very interesting man. Yeah, my father was um, a civilized man. Uh, that's a word, yeah? Civilized? Very good word. Yeah. My father was a civilized man living in an uncivilized time. The civilized, they was the first to die. As you might expect, making pictures with that sort of intensity like is hard work. But Meryl told us how she relaxes on location by going to the nightly screenings of the day's unedited footage. I go to Russia's because they have wine at Russia's and potato chips. <laughs> I'm so tired at the end of the day. Uh, and I, you know, it's, it's like a little reward for me to go to Russia's. To shoot a movie 12 to 14 hours a day and go home and wonder what it is that you've done is excruciating. I just need to know what it looks like. You know, it's like painting blindfold. Meryl Streep has proven again and again that she can hold her own with the great actors of our age. And in plenty, she appears with Sir John Gielgud. Oscars or no Oscars, it must feel good to have the respect of such a legend. She seemed completely at, in control of her emotions and of her pace and timing and uh, reactions to the other people were remarkable. I was enormously impressed by that. How good of you to make an appearance. I'm only sorry to be delayed. Oh, Brock says you're all ragged with fatigue. I hear you've been having the most frightful week. It has been, yes. Well, don't worry. Here, at least you can relax. You've met Monsieur Ong. Indeed. You can forget everything. The word Suez Canal will not be spoken. That will be an enormous relief. They are banned. You will not hear them. Thank you, my dear. NASA, nobody will mention his name. Right. Nobody will say blunder, or folly, or fiasco. Nobody will say international laughing stock. You are among friends, Leonard. Plenty follows 20 years in the life of its main character. It's an epic that should appeal to fans of masterpiece theater and the like. For Merle, it's another chance to stretch her acting talents, and to do it with an impeccable British accent. If I think about the word, I'm lost. I just have to think about why I'm saying what I want and just hope it comes out right. Sometimes it doesn't, and the sound man comes over and says, uh, um, they're all uh, very, very um, New Jersey. <laughs>
You know, there's another film that Merle stars in that has everyone here in Hollywood very excited. It's called Out of Africa, and Merle co-stars along with Robert Redford. I've been told it's kind of an updated version of The African Queen, and you can expect to see it in movie theaters this coming Christmas. Well, there are lots of top actresses starring in movies this fall, and when we come back on Seeing Stars, we'll preview some of them. Fonda, Bancroft, and more. We'll be right back. With summer behind us, you can expect to see fewer teen movies and fewer action-adventure films. Fall is traditionally a time when the movie studios release films that are geared towards a more mature audience. And it's interesting to note that many of the Academy Award nominations generally come from films released at this time of the year. In fact, there's talk in Hollywood already that Meryl Streep's role in plenty may be an Academy Award nominee. But Meryl will find some stiff competition from other actresses appearing in movies this fall, some of Hollywood's most prestigious actresses. Let's take a look. Well, Jessica Lang, who won an Oscar nomination for her performance in Country last year, will be back this fall in a movie called Sweet Dreams. It's the story of country and western singer Patsy Cline. Well, people in hell want ice water. That don't mean they get it. Sissy Spacek won an Oscar for her portrayal of country western singer Loretta Lynn in Coal Miner's Daughter. In October, she stars in Marie, a true story about a woman who uncovers high-level corruption in Tennessee's parole system. You're very pretty, Agnes. This month, Jane Fonda stars in Agnes of God, her first movie since the Academy Award-winning On Golden Pond. Agnes of God is the story of a young nun accused of killing her illegitimate child. Fonda stars as the court psychiatrist who must determine if Agnes is mentally fit to stand trial for murder. Look, doctor, I don't know how to tell you this politely, but I don't approve of you. Anne Bancroft stars as the mother superior who tries to protect Agnes from the psychiatrist. She's often at odds with Fonda's character, but in this scene, they begin to warm up to each other. Would you like one? Huh? I'd love one. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> the saints would have smoked if tobacco had been popular back then? Undoubtedly. <coughs> Not the ascetics, of course, but... Well, St. Thomas More. <laughs> Long, thin, and filtered. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Actress Glenn Close won three Oscar nominations for her first four movie roles. Now Glenn has two more chances to win the Oscar because she's starring in two movies this fall. In October, you'll see Glenn Close in a psychological thriller called Jagged Edge. She stars opposite Jeff Bridges as a criminal lawyer who becomes romantically involved with a murder suspect. Oh, she's back. What happened? This month, Glenn Close is starring in a comedy. In Maxie, she plays Jan Chaney, a straight-laced woman whose life is turned upside down when a flamboyant flapper named Maxie, who's been dead for 60 years, decides to inhabit her body. Actually, Maxie shares Jan's body. She comes and goes as she pleases, and her timing is impeccable. In this scene, Maxie pops up at a party that could be crucial to Jan's husband's career. Gee, I wish they'd play something I knew. Where did my chic go? Uh huh. Well, there's dancing, there's floozies. Oh, in a parking lot. Go pedal it elsewhere, lady. The goods look damaged. My man ain't buying. I beg your pardon. Consider yourself pardoned. I'll take a hike. What? I said scram. Hit the bricks. Take a powder. Oh, this is my wife, Jan. Jen's my chef for my new boss. Only during working hours. Now, our boss lady, would you take your arm off him or should I just take your arm off? Period. 
Why, Nick, your wife is charming in a very primitive way. Stop it. This is embarrassing. He's off, boss lady. Mrs. Cheney, for your information, this party is part of Nick's job. Come on, Nicky. There are some people I want you to meet. Stop it. Oh! Oh, oh. oh I hate to waste such good hooch. Have one on you? Don't mind if I do. I need another ticket. My glass seems to be empty. Crazy. She could fire me. Oh. It'll be interesting to see how these movies are received, especially at Oscar time. And you've got to admit, these films are quite a bit different from the kind of teen comedies we've been seeing all summer long. We've lots more movies for you here on Seeing Stars. We'll tell you about next week's show in just a moment. We just took a look at some movies which star some of Hollywood's most respected leading ladies. Well, next week on Seeing Stars, we'll meet one of the hottest new leading ladies around, Mariel Hemingway. Beautiful Mariel Hemingway is best known to movie audiences for her appearances in pictures like Manhattan, Personal Best, and Star 80. We'll discover why she's a star for the 80s as we look at her newest motion picture with Peter O'Toole, the picture creator. Then we'll meet a legend. Veteran actor Jimmy Stewart reveals which of his movies are his favorites. And he shares some wonderful backstage memories from the making of It's a Wonderful Life, Rear Window, and The Glenn Miller Story. We have a great show for you next week and one I'm sure you won't want to miss as we bring you the best and the latest from Hollywood. That's it for this edition of Seeing Stars. I'm Jim Finnerty. Thanks for being with us. Till next time. <laughs>